these fake premium irons were made way before Wish was even a company. Let's see how good they are, shall we? This morning I went and bought a premium set of fake irons from back in the day way before Wish was even started or founded as a company and some of the things I found out about these irons is quite literally shocking. So in this video I'm going to tell you exactly what I spent on these irons second hand. We're going to get up close and personal with the irons themselves so you can tell in the future whether you've spotted an old set of fake irons or if you've actually just got a genuinely good deal. How it's a lot easier to tell what clubs are fake nowadays than it used to back in the day and hence how these could have potentially gone unnoticed for quite a long time. Then how they have actually performed out on the golf course down here at Sanford Springs as I've played near on six holes with them. And lastly, if you're just like me and you know full well you're buying a set of replica irons but because of the price they're essentially given away, is it actually worth picking these up? for a complete beginner. So this morning I travelled down to Guildford, two hour round trip to pick up this full set, three to sandwich of Ping Rapture irons for £50. And it was stated in the title on Facebook Marketplace that these were replicas. So I knew full well what I was buying and the price itself intrigues me versus that performance side. Yes, these are fake irons and I'm not condoning anyone going spending a huge amount on counterfeit irons as you're just better off buying genuine older sets from the manufacturer for a similar amount of money but just obviously six seven years older but with a price tag of five pound per iron with a graphite shaft how bad or good could they actually be so ladies and gents here they are in all their glory and how can you tell old fake irons apart from the genuine ones because to be honest this on Facebook Marketplace, Ping Rapture full set, £50. You're not really going to think it's too good to be true. You're just thinking genuinely someone's just trying to clear the shed, get rid of some old golf clubs, make a bit of space. And it's not unheard of to get a set of irons that came out in 2008 for £50 for a full set. But there are a few things that definitely strike out that you wouldn't normally see with a genuine set of any Ping irons for that matter. Number one's probably quite apparent as I'm showing you these irons now, the rust and the condition of them in the back. And this is probably more for Ping than any other manufacturer. Ping design tanks when it comes to golf clubs, meaning that the older clubs from Ping actually last really well. And I think that's a big reason why the second hand price of Ping clubs are much more expensive than any other manufacturer. As you'd easily see with like Mizuno or Titleist, potentially forged clubs as well. You'll see big rust spots all over the face. You just wouldn't normally see this with Ping. I'm not saying no Ping irons rust at all because there definitely are some cases, but the extent of rust and condition on the back of these heads, especially with Ping, is definitely a big telltale sign. Number two is there's no serial numbers on the back of the hosel. Every Ping golf club has a stamped or lasered if it's in America, Ping serial number on the back there. I'm not saying it's impossible not to fake that serial number, but for Ping specifically, if there's not a serial number anywhere on the hosel, that definitely should be ringing alarm bells. Some manufacturers only put a serial number, for example, on the seven iron. The majority of custom golf clubs will have serial numbers across all of the irons, but some sets that are just sold in pro shops potentially will just have a serial number on the pitching wedge or the seven iron, depending on what manufacturer. In terms of the labeling, I think it's relatively spot on. All the way down to the little lie dot angle, you can see that these are green lie angle. I wish I had a loft and lie machine to actually see how accurate these are, but the little slant in terms of the hosel, and obviously I'm gonna show you some images of a genuine Ping Rapture iron here, and if they were side by side, I'm pretty sure we could tell them apart. But the whole point, and what I'll get on into a minute when we go through the performance side, is that back in 2008, when these were potentially sold to someone, without them knowing if these are genuine or not, going from this kind of side and potentially not having the same kind of exposure to the internet like we do nowadays, could these actually pass off as a genuine set? The one big red flag, or potentially green flag, I should be saying, is this down the side here. I have no idea what that is because from all the Ping Rapture irons I've seen online, not a single one of them has WTI stamped on the toe. But this might have been the biggest shocking factor that I found on these golf clubs, which is pretty much the last thing I was expecting to well find. I've got an extremely faint label on the bottom of this four iron, including the set. And as I get closer, I'm using my iPhone so you guys can hopefully see. If you're running this at 480p, then sadly you probably won't be able to see it. But I'm dead certain that's a pound symbol and the number's 119.90 pence. 
down the shaft. Meaning at some point, somewhere, whether this was sold as a second hand set or sold in a shop as a counterfeit set, nonetheless, this was sold in the UK at some point for £119.90. pence. How many other owners have had these sets of iron since then? I mean, we're going near one 16 years ago. I have no idea. I was amazed and shocked to see this on the bottom of one of these golf clubs. And when it comes to the internet in relation to golf, I see it as a blessing and a curse. Yes, there is a lot more availability to get hold of counterfeit golf clubs than there ever used to be. No one really trusted the internet back in 2008, 2009. And if you even told your head pro that you bought something online, it'd probably disown you then and there. But also within the same thought pattern, there just wasn't any forums. There wasn't any information. There definitely wasn't any YouTube videos on fake counterfeit golf clubs. And very little for golfers to compare irons or drivers that did somehow managed to get out into the market therefore it doesn't surprise me that this has a very distinctive pro shop sticker on it and I'd love to know if this was sold as a replica or a genuine second-hand set of peeing up rapture irons so let's get on to performance as I've played six holes with these golf clubs now and the first thing that you would automatically assume is that these clubs don't go far and in actual fact it's the complete opposite wedge to seven iron they go a complete mile i think it's down to the lack of grooves and a shaft that's obviously been put in it these launch incredibly high but with zero control i'm essentially out on the golf course playing flies and it's incredibly difficult to gauge what iron is supposed to be used where however when we get into the longer irons it's almost the opposite they don't sound bad and that's what i presumed the first time i was going to hit them i thought they would go sound awful tinny and outright disintegrate in my hands but this just wasn't the case what I found with the higher end of the bag, three, four, and five especially, is that that lack of forgiveness, the lack of quality of materials that are actually in the head, the lack of swing weighting, balance, you name it, made hitting off center hits incredibly unforgiving. And that's exactly what ping irons are designed for, especially these Rapture irons. They are supposed to be high MOI. So if you do hit it off the hill and you do hit it off the toe, you shouldn't be expecting to lose that much distance. And at the same time, trying to hold some kind of dispersion together. More counterfeit golf clubs that I try one thing becomes more and more apparent and it's very ironic and it's because the majority of manufacturers always hone on about how powerful their golf clubs are how far their golf clubs can go where in actual fact it's incredibly easy to get a golf club to go far I hit the fake nine iron today 170 yards which is an obscene amount of distance but with zero control it's very easy to make a cheap long distance iron it's incredibly difficult to make a long distance iron but forgiving and also keeping that distance from all over the face but as soon as I didn't strike it correctly or I hit out the toe or heel boy oh boy did you notice a drop off in virtually everything so i guess the final question is should you go and buy these irons even if you find them for 50 pounds for a full set three to sandwich which is incredible value and my honest answer would be no yes it's incredibly good value but you're not making the game easier for yourself these irons are designed to be forgiving and that's exactly what they aren't my honest advice would be spend twice as much hundred pounds on a full set of Ben Ross or Wilson irons for example and not only are you getting the same amount of distance you're not trading off that level of forgiveness because the quality is there but you're not necessarily getting the hyped up brand and I can hear some of you already going Simon what advice is that spend twice the amount of money to get a better iron of course that's going to happen you can't sell these counterfeit golf clubs you can't sell them pretty much anywhere and unless there's a random youtuber coming through the woods to pick up your set of irons to make a video out of you're pretty much going to be stuck with a 50 pound loss regardless whereas those Ben Ross and Wilson irons as they lost their depreciation brand new value already you'll easily be able to move them on for 80 pounds meaning you got a better set and only lost 20 pounds opposed to 50. guys if you so happen to like this video you might like my review of the fake sim driver i tested a couple of weeks ago in the link above catch you guys later